Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, I guess this is episode 5 of Hotel California, and this is part 2 with my boy, big sexy Kevin Curran from rock band Hail Mary. How you going Kev? I'm doing well man. Uh, I did, uh, I did got a little bit, um, I did let you know that um, I listened to the first episode of uh, Hotel California, and yeah. um and I noticed that uh, Jacob got a, uh, a. You said that it was a tradition. It will be a tradition. And yeah. I, I noticed with when the first part we did, I did. You didn't didn't give me that tradition. So. Um, so yeah, the the tradition is supposed to be that I do a shot of tequila with every guest that I have in person. But because Brad in episode two was in Germany when I interviewed him, and Dave was about to go on stage for the last one, and I didn't have any tequila on me, I forgot about the tradition. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I hope that I have offended just, you. I've just got to like, hold you accountable, you know. Like, and you've held me accountable, and I'm a man of my word. I'm sorry, and I apologise to you and to everyone out there who's upset that I haven't had a shot with Kevin Curran, a shot of tequila. But you know what? We're going to do it now. Lovely a shot of Scorpion tequila, right here, right now, to get part two underway. All right. Oh fuck. <laughs> That's, that's beautiful. It's fucking good shit, isn't it? Oh, I can oh, feel it, man. Through every single inch of my body. Even the bum hole. This podcast is going to go... Boo, now. Oh, mate. Trust me. Once I start slurring, it's uh, all downhill from there. Okay, so where were we at? We were talking about the Perth rock and roll scene when it was cooking with gas, bro. It was cooking with gas. I mean, we were playing with bands like Ragdoll... Emerald City, you know, those types from back then. I don't know who else was there. Who else was around uh, at that time? At the time... Uh, Emerald City was a, probably a, a year after we started. Um, Ragdoll came a little bit later on. Right. Um, so, yeah, there was, there was bands back then. We played a band called Battle Cat back then. Um, I've seen that that sticker we played with them a lot placed in different um, re- uh, rehearsal yeah, studios yeah we played with them a lot back in the day man there were so many bands back then it was, it was yeah it was, it was just piles piles and piles of different acts we played with but you um, can't remember any of their names oh I can I can't oh, it goes to show you how fucking memorable <laughs> they were mate I'm just trying to like think of bands <laughs> like we still play well, we, we a, a band that's still going nowadays it was around the same time as us was the Brown Study Band um, so they, they're still going as well. So that's pretty about the only band I can think of that. Was a lot around. of bands fallen off the uh, map. Yeah, right? definitely, definitely. So or or they've members have become parts of other bands or or. But yeah, like generally, was the, there a band called Gombo or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I think they're still going. They're still going. Um, they've they've got an album in the works, but they haven't played for a while. But yeah, we we they were a little bit later on as well. We played with them. Um, yeah, it was just. And I was just trying to think. Trying to think now. It's like it's like a, like a trip down memory lane. Trying to remember the bands you played with in the beginning. And you yeah. don't you don't even smoke pot, so this is really no, it's, it's scary to me I'm that not, you, you can't remember anything. This I is mean. this is what we're drinking right here. I'd it's, expect it's lot, this from my worse. drummer Stewie, but you. Very you beer, beer's worse. <laughs> and old age. Um, when do you think that the Perth rock scene started going down the gurgler, mate? When was it that it's I, just like, shit, where the when fuck I, is everyone? When you say do, going down the gurgler, I don't think... I, it, it's not the quality of music that's went down the gurgler. I just think the... I just meant like the... The, the actual bands playing that style of music. Or the, the as many... As, uh, the, the support. I think it. it's become very... Uh, it's very... A show now could be... You just don't know what you're going to get with Perth. Sometimes you can go, oh, I'm not sure how this show's going to go, and it can be really fucking awesome. Like, it, it could be a good turnout, and, or you just don't, you don't know what you're going to get nowadays. That's what I'm, with Perth, it's, it's, there's so much stuff going on, and so many things of distractions, where people would rather stay at home, and put the Netflix on, and there's so many other things you can do without leaving the house, that have changed things quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it, probably 2000. 14 onwards I think it's gotten it's it's changed quite a bit I, I found look there wasn't as many venues I think the Rocket Room in Perth um, not doing music anymore was a big loss because that venue was really cool because you could hang out there there was bands playing from 8 o'clock to midnight and then there was bands playing from like the, I think there were one of the first venues that did the whole 
uh, bands playing after after midnight. So your bands playing at three o'clock in the morning. Original bands that yeah. was, and and people were hanging out there, and it was a really good good place to hang out. And um, I don't that, know what happened because I remember going there for that probably near the tail end when it was still kind of packed. But then you know I'd still go there every weekend, and then slowly but surely, like I remember my mate Nick were there one night, and it was like. You know, just after a twelve or something, we just walked in. You know, like here we go, rocket room again, and like there was no one in there. There was like maybe four people in there. Me and him sat at the bar, and it's a bit weird. There was like, where where is everyone? This this used to be pumping every weekend. And yeah. Then all of a sudden, just one day, it was no longer as as busy. And I guess I don't know if the clientele that they usually had started getting older and now were picking and choosing when they go out I think the, I think they started to change the formula of what worked in the very beginning of that place right. I think they had they had um, it was just a very cool place to hang out and good music good DJs and were playing good music you wanted to hear kind of like what uh, the Joe's Juice Joint's doing now is they've got they don't have as many bands playing there but just you got a place to go just to hang out have a couple of drinks with your, your friends and, play, and hear some good good rock music you know yeah that's what they had going for them and they had the original bands playing there and it was it was a it was a winner it was it was doing really well but I think they kind of moved away from that formula I wish I liked Joe's Juice Joint more I wish I did yeah I don't know why I just never really have a good time when I'm there it's good music but it's so loud and they need some cheaper beers, I must be honest. For your cheapest beer to be a $7... No. You need to be a, you have a $5 option and then I'll be happy, okay? <laughs> you know, we need to try and convince people to get out of their house. It needs to be a real cheap option for, you know, poor cunts like me. Um, all right, let's get back to Hail Mary and, and, and all that. Um, thank you for the insight on, on, you know, how you felt the, the Perth scene, you know, started to dwindle as far as just, attendance. It's just, and yeah, it's just being honest and uh, just seeing how, calling it like I see it really. Right. You know? um, so, I don't know what album we're up to at this point. Navigate the Sunrise, is that the next one after you, I don't know, you did an yes, EP? Yes, yeah, we, we had an idea where we'd um, instead of doing an album, we would do two Basically, an album's worth of material split into two releases, so two EPs. We at the time we were kind of like, it was kind of like things were changing, and then like, you know, streaming was coming in, and that was becoming more popular, right. and, and so we had that idea of maybe doing two releases of of, of an albums with material in, in in a year. And so that's basically what we've done. So then we can stretch it out. We do two tours. We can do a couple of clips, and and really stretch out that that whole you know like of, of of rolling it all out and so that's the kind of idea we initially had but a lot of things changed so it made that stretch out longer than what it was so right. that was the initial idea what we done with navigate the sunrise we actually didn't have a uh, a bass player at the time when we recorded that ep so right um it, it's you touched on something just then about the changing of how things get sold and how you put out albums was it a, a, a difficult process to go from we're playing a show, we're selling CDs at shows and you can buy them off our fucking Bandcamp band camp page or whatever. It's getting to a point now where people aren't buying physical things anymore, they're just buying it to put onto their tablet or on their phone or on their computer, uh, not getting anything physical anymore. You know, how did you feel about that process changing and, and you know CDs no longer kind of being it's just important. it's just a, it's just the way it is and you got to kind of go with it because there's, there's nothing you can do about it you know like people are uh, we found in the UK I think um, we we sold a lot of stuff in the UK when we toured there I think it was mainly having having the discs there is mainly a thing now where someone will want you to sign the copy of the of the of the oh, right. just to have that just to have a physical thing in their hand got your signature on it I, I seen that band I, lo- I like that band and I got the signature and they've got the, that so I think that's become more of a thing uh, of a physical you still I think in this day and age you've got to have you've got to cover all your bases you've got to have your streaming you've got to have your physical you've got to and you've got to have vinyl and you've got to have all that stuff you've got to have each a bit, a bit of everything yeah you've got to you've got to cater for everyone because everyone's uh, you know mainly going towards the streaming but you've still got to have you got to cater for everyone who still enjoys have putting on a, on a CD or, or, yeah. or you know. So having everything, that kind of that's you can just kind of go to roll with the punches, and that's the way it is now. This way, the way the world is, and that's that's you just got to deal with it. You I know mean, I mean? I, I've been ignoring my CD collection for five six years. I just listen to music on my laptop now. Um, but recently, I got a new car and it's got a CD player. So I went into my shed 
and I found all my old albums, and now I'm, you know, they're getting some use again, and I'm actually quite happy about it. Um, but that's the only occasion where I thought to myself, "Oh wow, there's an actual reason for my CDs." So now. basically, you were you you're used to listening to music on a laptop, which is really, let's be fair, it's quite shit sounding. It's, yeah. There's no bass really, <laughs> shit, yeah. so you got used to hearing because you don't, you care about the song. So basically, I did the same thing when I was driving my car. I had, I had um, for a while there, I had my CD. Got was broken or something, I, and I ended up using uh, the uh, the lighter, and I put my 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 phone through and started listening to music through the, my 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 car through the through the, the the phone, and I was listening to stuff for a while. I ended up getting uh, I ended up getting fixed, and so I ended up putting a CD back into my car and listening to it again, and went, wow. It sounds so much it's fucking so much better. better. Like isn't it's it? so much better. Yeah. I'm like, I can fucking feel that shit. Yeah. And that's not to say what what a vinyl gives you as well. That's even another level of just fucking hell. I can feel it's what's still, going on here. It's still better, dude. Uh, but I, and then from then on, I, I mean, I, I I don't give a shit. I still listen to CDs in the car because I majority of the music I listen to is in the car. I don't. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a guy that listens to it at home. I'm more. I'm more of an in the car guy. I will listen to something in the car. I listen um, at home when I'm cleaning the house. I'm a podcast guy. I listen to podcasts. Um, that, that's me. But in the car, I'll listen to you know podcasts as well. But I'll listen to music. And, and what's in your CD player right now? I'm actually revisiting um, Master of Puppets by Metallica. Sick. Um, um, the thing that should not be with that song is my favorite Metallica song of all time. And and I, for some reason, I'm not. A, I'm not a like. Not a huge Metallica fan, but that album in particular, I really, really like it. So I've been, been hammering just, just, that shit. I just put it back on, and I've been listening to that quite a bit. I've been it's, listening to Significant Other by Limp Biscuit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't give a shit. People give Limp Biscuit shit either. I, I, don't I, don't it, that, I, don't, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Still, st- 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 the good songs. They're good. Some good they're songs. Good songs, songs man. Chuck the Starfish, Significant Other, Three Dollar Bill. Fucking great. Songs. A good song's a good song. Yeah, you man. know. And and they were they. No one sounds like it. You know, they are. Yeah. You know, you, you hear limp, you know it's limp biscuit immediately. Um, they have a sound. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something. It's it's you know, like if you got it's a distinct. sound, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. Like the like the singer, oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. System of a Down singer. Oh, uh, Serge. Yeah, Serge, he, like, tank, so tank, tank, tank. you know it's his voice when you hear his. Yeah, voice. Yeah, instantly. You For know me- when you know it's Corey Taylor's voice when you hear his voice. You know mm-hmm. Marilyn Manson. Uh, do do you think that's a big part of? people finding success for me uh, that what you we said uh, with Serge I think I think System of Down probably is the last band that came out that really just made a fucking impact yeah and, and it had a sound that really pushed through and it became very like everyone had that album it's in their car it's crazy isn't it so yeah the music they make is crazy that's it's, crazy it's shit, nuts it's yeah nuts. you have to be fucking mad like genius to come up with that kind of shit um Anyway, back to um, we're just having a normal conversation like we usually yeah, do when we drink, and uh, I forgot we're actually doing a podcast. Um, that's, so that's, where, that's where the goal comes. You know? You're talking about you didn't have a bass player. You didn't have a bass player at the time. So I know over the years you've had some lineup changes. Um, John Stockman from legendary Aussie band Carnival filled in and played on all five tracks of the record. Uh, are you still in contact with John? No, no, um, John. Um, came about because uh, we had a guy called Ben Elphick in the band um, who was good friends with John and at the time so he, he he basically became a part of the band for a very short period where we we kind of knew that Todd at the time couldn't do as much uh, touring and as it could, couldn't commit as much time to the band so Ben came in um, it was a friend of Vass's and um just just filled in for some gigs where Todd couldn't do it, he couldn't tour. Ben came in, so we, we decided to make him a permanent member of the band. So we at the time we had three guitarists, but we never really played as a, we never ever played a gig as with three guitarists. But we kind of had him in the band. He he kind of filled in where he played guitar on that record, and he and he was our bass player at the time. So he played kind of filled in, in bass as well. So he kind of filled a role where he he filled in gigs where we needed them for, for guitar but he also filled in gigs where we needed them for bass too so we right. kind of got along w- w- in the in the search of finding you guys in the band we he kind of filled in the both both those roles and we we got through because of Ben and I and you know big, big, big credit to him he he, he brought um, he's, he's such a talented dude and I still I actually still play with him to this day doing acoustic gigs and that kind of stuff ah, cool. so basically he, he was friends with John Stockman good friends with him so we needed a bass player so he said to John would you be keen he came in and 
man, whew, what a, what a player! Like he he's really he's the first first bass player I've seen where the bass seemed like it wasn't just him playing bass. It seemed like the bass was like another arm on someone. It was like a right. <laughs> it was like an extension. It doesn't matter what tuning this guy was in. He 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 could just play. He just knew what the hell was going on, and he, he could listen to the song for the first time and and just play. And, and he came up with some great, great bass, low end stuff on that record. Um, and he did a great job. He, you know, very very short period of time too, and he just really bring something. And it was it, it, it made it made it really hard for other people after him to learn that material from that EP because they were listening to this isolated bass, bass files of him playing these these songs and, and like. Oh, what right. the fuck yeah. is he playing? I don't know what I don't know what to have what to do, and I'm just like just make it your own play, you know, the way it is, and you know, like it made it real difficult for for people proceeding. Right. Afterwards. Um. So you're talking about Todd uh, not being available as often. Was this uh, situation leading towards his eventual exit from the band? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, Todd. Uh, um, you know, he's got married recently, and he, he had a, he's had a family, and, and looking after yeah, some kids and stuff. So, he, like, that became his priority. And so it should be. Um, so that became his priority. But him, we always enjoyed being like being in the room with Todd and playing music. He he was just such a lovely person to be around. And and, and, and to this day, one, right? and just I was still keep in contact. He he recorded my latest um, song. I did. I call "Wake the Living Dead." And um, so he recorded that with me. So we still keep in contact, still good friends. Um, uh, with the lineup changes we've had in this band, there's not one person we've had uh, we've left the band on bad terms, or we are. Oh, I don't still speak to to this day. Right. It's just it's just where you are in life, you know. Like it's just it's like, circumstances. It just you, they move on. They you got something else to do. We 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 want this in the band. It's not what you're after. You and this is the way it is. Circumstances you know, life, you know? take place in life, which you know, means that decisions have to be made and crossroads, you know, are reached and it's no fault of anyone, no one's upset at anyone. It's just circumstance and these are the things that happened. It's not anything too horrible. No, know? no. I mean, there's, I mean there's a lot, I'm sure there's a lot of other bands out there. <laughs> it's the complete opposite. But, uh, yeah, like, I, I, I still, I'm still good friends with every single person that would play in this band. Or No, no, I not say good friends, but some people I don't see anymore. But still, if I've seen them, it'd be all cool. Or other people I still play with to this day will I will jam and stuff. So yeah, I, I, were you sad to see Todd go uh, with him being such a long term member of the? Yeah, I was, it was sad to see him go because he he was with me from the very beginning and he was a founding member and we we he wrote some really good material for the band like not songs but like just parts he who he came up with like for the songs are really good and but at the same time I think he knew. And we knew as well. It was, it, you know, I, I know, I know he couldn't commit as much as we were after from him, and he knew that. We knew that, and it was just like, you know, it's time to go into the next chapter. You know, like it was, it was, it, was, it is what it was. You know, it was, it, and, that, and that's that's it. You know. And I'm sure if there's ever a big, you know, Hail Mary anniversary show or something like that, maybe we'll hop on stage and play. A actually, of the Todd's um, actually filled in for us a couple of times on bass really? too. So. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's yeah, he, he, you know, like it's it's kind of like that thing. Where I think if I've said, hey, Todd, would you like to come up and play a show with us? We got the show boom. I think he'd be cool. And then, yeah, good fun. And vice versa, he plays in a punk band called Castle Bravo. We'll give them a shout out. Um, and yeah, I, I filled in for his band too. So it's kind of like that, you know, like. It's you know that's excellent, bro. Um, so there's never any frustration on your part from the situation of band members leaving and having to find new ones. It, I I like talking about this subject it, because I hate the audition process. It's fucking. It is a pain in the ass finding someone new. It, it, <clears throat> I won't, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is really. It's difficult because it's not just it's not just the personality it's not just the music it has to be the full package you know you need someone who can play the songs really well you need someone who's, who's, uh, who's on a good personal level it's it is more to it than just uh, that they can play the they songs can play you know, shit like. and do their shit yeah it's a, it's a whole whole deal there isn't it um uh I, I won't get too far ahead in that and talk about we'll talk about the current lineup very soon we've still got a bit to go though um <laughs> So, 2014, we're going up to 2014, Navigate the Sunrise EP release, another EP going out there, man, fucking so many releases, I'm so impressed. 
I, I can't wait till I'm at that point where I'm like, yeah, we've got fucking four four studio albums and fucking three EPs. Like, it just, two, two take, live it just takes one release. Once you get that first one out of the thing, and then, then it just you keeps snowballing. You know? Okay, I can't wait for it. Um, it sent you guys on a 26 date headline run of shows that took place in all six states of Australia. That's fucking wicked. Tell me about it, that. It, it was it was That's men, crazy. it was men, it was mental. Like if you look at any other like a lot of the other bands that's doing like Australian tours, they do one every city or maybe you know they might do maybe a bit more. But like we did a pretty extensive run. We've gone to regional stuff. We did we, did, you, a, we did a lot. Here's, here's, here's a little little test for you. Can you name every every town that you played in all twenty six? Uh, I I could do a lot, but maybe not all twenty six. <laughs> you know, I didn't think so. But um, but all six states. I mean, it's yeah. We we even we the got... ACT. Where the fuck's what? Ah, uh, we not uh, maybe not on that run. We 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 did go, we did come back and do that though. All right, we did we did we <laughs> we done we've you done it in Canberra. No, no, sorry, sorry, no. We have not been to Canberra. That's the only place we haven't. So not ACT, been. we're not. Could, that's well, it's a, it's not really a state, is it? It's more. It's a territory, right? Yeah, we have not been to Canberra. But did you um, play in Northern Territory? We we're not on that tour, but we did. Uh, we Eventually, have, did. we we did. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, but still, that must have been quite mental. Um, yeah, it was a long. It was a long tour. Uh, like it was. It's it's good because you you do a couple of shows and you feel like the band gets just like you got your thing you're doing every night and you start to really start to get cooking you know, like after a couple of shows and it's, it's good for that you so know? do you guys all save up money and you're going to be gone for a, f- a few months I suppose I mean how, how it's does- just done over the weekends like you 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 do maybe uh, like a weekend where you hit off Melbourne and Sydney and you know you do a few in one weekend and then the next weekend so you come back to home and then you you come back to Perth and then you fly some of them we out. didn't some really? of them we didn't we we did we do we'd stay in Melbourne and we'd stay for like two weeks where we we'd stay at our, our um our manager at the time Tanya's uh, uh like an apartment we'd stay there and we we would stay there for a weekend and go somewhere else sort of thing we did that quite a bit. It was crazy, um, but we did. Um, I'm not sure if it was that tour, but I think we did. Uh, we got a government grant. Um, oh right, okay. so that helped so a that lot. Helped you out. Okay. That helped a lot. We done that twice actually, and it worked, that, that worked for us a lot. Ah, interesting. I just like you know I've known you for a while now, and actually didn't know anything about that. So I thought that yeah. was quite interesting um, how you'd figure out all that shit, and you know if how long you'd be gone for, and. If you'd just be playing weekends or weekdays as well, I don't know what it's like in other states. Like yeah, I mean, we definitely was all it was all weekends we did. We um yeah we some some yeah we'd come back to Perth and it, it yeah it, it is a bit taxing doing that. And, you know I'm, I mean it's so different for like a place like the UK or America where you can just get in a van and drive and go this place to this yeah. place to this place. I don't think people understand like Australia is so it's so far stretched apart. out it's, and it makes it really hard for a band to like get to all where you need to no go. No wonder Perth gets all their shit cancelled because... Yeah, it's if, it's it's fucking hard. It's not easy. If, I, you know? if only everyone would just start their tour in Perth and then maybe the East Coast shows would just get cancelled because they'd have to fly over there instead of fly over here. Oh, man. Fuck me dead. Uh, you supported Aussie Rock Legends, the Screaming Jets, during this time. Do you have any stories of working shows with them? I uh, no, we didn't really get to. We did meet them very briefly. They they kind of just uh, we we would finish. They would be at their hotel. They would come in. As oh, they come in. Right. Uh, we, so I didn't have them inter- t- the only person that had that band had interaction with was uh, Paulie, the the bass player. He um we we lent him a bass rig one time or something went wrong. Um, he was he was pretty cool. Um, but we, yeah, we've played with the Screaming Jets twice. We supported them once at the Charles, and once at the Capitol. I think we done um, the Charles was really good, great show for us. We sold le- lots of merch. It was to pack pack gig, really really good. But yeah, didn't have too much interaction with those guys. They just was just sort of like you know they're veterans and they and I don't want to be watching fucking fucking support so you support shows bands with them. Done. And I have more stories of my yeah, interactions you with do. them than you do. Yeah, right. yeah, me and Dave, me and old mate Dave. You're, yeah, you're we like, go way back. Yeah, like, like three, four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I watched their show, uh, and they were they they're great, great band. Um, we're getting to 2015 here in the timeline. You tour the UK, you do a little thing in the UK, and this is crazy to me that you support Ugly Kid Joe um, and Richard's Crane. I don't know what that means. Is that? 
Uh, Richard Crane's a uh, was a like a kind of duo. And now they're they're a trio now of of uh, Whit Crane from Ugly Good Joe. Right, I thought that was going to be guys from the actual. Band, and then yeah. uh, and members from uh, Godsmack. Oh right, and okay. I now they've I've uh, brought another guy into the band. Um, so they they so that they just it's just like acousticy sort of uh, like styled uh, basically yeah. um, Whit Crane singing a, a more stripped back kind of material. That's what kind of what they were do. Great album. Um, the lead single on that on that record, uh, Miles Kennedy from Alter Bridge is right. the lead singer. He sings on that track. So, yeah, they, they they've got some great great songs. So they they did the show every night with us, and so that was oh okay yeah. Um, so like for me, it's crazy to to think that you support Ugly Kid Joe. It's the first album that you ever bought. Yeah, it was it was pretty special. When for you me. found out that you got that, yeah, I mean, you must have been yeah. I, I was shit, yeah. I was. I remember even like. When I found out we were being considered for it, I remember I did the whole, the, the whole um, uh, what's the what's the book called the uh, the secret? Yeah, I did all that shit. I I looked at the I looked at the well, the, the thing the, that Ryback was talking. Yep, about. The, <laughs> I looked at the post. I looked at the posters of them doing their tour. Uh, I envisioned on. Hail Mary supporting it. I did it. I did it every night. I, I don't know why I did it. I just I just. I'm, I'm like I'm going to try it. I want to play. In, I was like I want to play in that 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 that, that tour. Uh, well, this is I've got a similar story. I once I saw Hail Mary play, and I saw you, and I envisioned that one day we'd be friends, and now we're best friends in the whole wide world. Dude, fuck yeah, bro! <laughs> <laughs> um, your tales on your time in the UK are fun to listen to for me. Um, tell everyone out there about the Ugly Kid Joe tour and what that did for you guys. Oh, it, it's it's playing to a, cr- a, a, a a group of people every night, a good crowds of people who've never seen your band before. They're like they've got no, they've got no. They're not from Perth. They're not gonna think. Oh, they're not. They're, they're, this. they're just they're just watching. They're they're rock fans. They like they're into Ugly Kid Joe. They're into their guitar riffs. They're into their songs. They're having their pre-drinks before Ugly Kid Joe. All right, let's check this band so out. Oh, so this is this yeah, band lads. coming on the stage. All right, yeah, lad, these ba- this band's <laughs> fucking well good, in it? Yeah, so we're playing to, to people who've never seen the band before, got no preconceived notions of what we sound like. We're just laying it on. And, and we, that every fucking show, it was great response. Selling shitloads of merch. You could, re- like, you could really see... If we could get to do this over and over and over again and do another tour and do another tour, you could see how fast it would how grow. How quickly it would happen. Getting on that next tour is the next. This is, is the hard part, you know, like getting another another opportunity to do that. So that that tour was great for us. We made so many good fans from that show. We get, still to this day on Facebook. There's so many people. Who say, I still from, see people comment from the UK. Come when you come back to the UK, if it was fucking up to me, we'd be there in a heartbeat, you know. But it's just it's not. It's not that easy to, to be from where we are in Perth, Western Australia, to go all the way to the UK, which is 20-odd plus hours away, you know, get accommodation, which we didn't have in that tour. We, we had to sleep on anyone would have us, like, houses, their couches, whatever. We, we didn't book any accommodation that tour. How did not that once. For you? How did you... Were no, any, sorry. Were there any tough situations where you had to kind of figure it out at the last fucking second? To- well, there was... That whole tour, there was one night where the only, the only reason why I did, I had to sleep in the van and um, me and the, the guitarist, uh, Paul Kush, had to sleep in the van is because we fell asleep in the van. So during the time we were we passed out in the van, the rest of the guys got to sleep on the tour bus with Ugly Kid Joe and Richard Crane. So they got in there, but there wasn't enough room for us to be on the bus. So we woke up, but we I was stuck in this fucking uncomfortable van on the back seat with like the 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 seat belts digging into my back and that was one night the only one night that i i had to sleep in the van but the rest of the nights every night we had you know uh whit crane from ugly Kid joe was on the mic hey 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 guys do you want to adopt ab- uh, an australian rock band <laughs> and he would do the spiel every single night oh good on him and um Every night, someone came up to us. Yeah, I got I got a couple of beds at my house. You can come. So we ended up sleeping in different people's houses every night, and met just lovely people. Like, you know, you like you, you're so like in life, you get so 
not trusting of people. And these people just wanted us just to help us. And it was amazing. We made great friends uh, to this day from that trip. Just, oh man, <laughs> so many stories and so, so many fun. things. I'm getting excited thinking about it. It, it was so much it fun. It was cool. You know, we, uh, we just had people, buy, they, you know, oh, have you got something to eat? They would buy us fucking bucket of chicken or something or <laughs> buy us a bottle of Jack Daniels. And <coughs> yeah, awesome. it, was, it was so many people helped us out on that, on that trip. It was, it was amazing. Um, from previous conversations we've had, uh, the singer for Ugly Kid Joe is a little, a little crazy. Not crazy, but you know, the, I love the story about you guys in catering. Oh, I know. He he just he's just very uh, not in catering, but in in the backstage area, and he's he's trying to help. He you just out there. he just very like wants to help you. Like he, he I remember the like, first like in like in one of the first interactions we had was just I uh, just. Hey guys, what what kind of help you? Oh, uh, you know, he, I remember him bringing over this big, uh, like uh, like all the their stuff from the their uh, rider they had and uh, food and, and what you know. Let me know what you want. He's very very lovely like that. He just would give us you know give, here's some right, food. Did, can I get you anything? You know what you know. He brings all over all this food to you and you're like oh thanks man. And then you try and engage in conversation and then he's gone. I love that bit. <laughs> he's very like he's very like. I think I think having a lot of people talking to you all the time, being in that position of being—that's what I thought. Like I've just like conversations with people about the same shit for yeah, it must years. must you'd be like I just no like just and, just I, I, mean, I wouldn't say cr- crazy is the word more in, uh, uh, just intense, very intense guy, very intense, passionate, right, very yeah. passionate about what he's talking about, very uh, like. You know, like just just gives it. I think he gives everyone a little bit of time. Like he'll just, you know, talk. He's off to next next thing, talking to this. But you know, he just wants to make everyone, make sure everyone's happy. You know, lovely guy. Excellent. Um, right, we're getting closer towards now time. Um, so, like, one question I did have. Um, you know, you have a whole heap of dope shit in a short amount of time. And you accomplish all of that and you play in front of these big crowds and gain these followings. And then to come back to Perth and be in a situation a lot of bands are in here with attendance figures. How does it play on your mind when you have these long absences between playing like real important shows? Uh, yeah, it sucks. It sucks. Yeah, I, I definitely come back from like, uh, you know, we did the first tour with Uncle Joe and then we went back this following year and we did a couple of shows with him again. And then we did a festival in Wales. And it's just like when you're on that on that high, like of playing these shows, and then you 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 kill it. It's it's so fun. It's so I mean, you're only on stage for such a short amount of time. You put all this work in during the day, and you you you, you do your thing, and then when you come back, it's you do have the blues. It's like you're like, oh, yeah, you man, I want to keep doing that. I want to keep I want to keep that up. I want to keep playing that that kind of like kind of stuff. And it's it's very. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to, to make that happen more often. You know, you don't. Yes, it's it's. Yeah, you come back to Perth, and it's you know, like it's doesn't doesn't work that way here. You know, it's yeah. very it's a different different animal. You know, yeah. you know, you, you get you're getting viewed when you go uh, like to the to UK. You're getting viewed as an international touring act. When you when you sort of come back to Perth, it's kind of like you can't even get on Whamfest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like it's like you're not you're not looked at like you just uh, play with Uncle Kid Joe, motherfucker. Give us one slot somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's like it's just diff- it's a different. It's so different. Like you're back to playing. Like I don't know. Like I, I think that I think there's bands in Perth like are fucking amazing. But you you stick them and you put them in a, a different place. You, you stick them in the UK or you stick them in America and then put them on a festival. People's going to go, fucking hell, man. Look at that. Look at this band. Put Jackson Coke on a bill. Put them in Europe. Then play in a bill. They're going to go, fuck it. Wow. Look I at this. Because they don't have happen. that preconceived notions of you're, you're in a Perth, you're a Perth band and you've got this, this fucking scene of uh, uh, you're in a local band or a local scene of... There's this governing body behind it. It's 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 not that you don't have that. It's just like you're a band. People watch you. This band's cool. I enjoy what they're playing. I enjoy the music. They, you know, I like this. That's yeah. all it is. There's no there's no there's no there's no more no more thinking there's than no, that. There's no bullshit. Um, right. Well, uh, you, you you mentioned your trip to Wales. How was that experience at the um, Hard Rock Hill Festival? I, did you play that one with Massive? Yeah, they were playing. 
on a different stage than I think they were playing at the same time to be honest with you which really sucked because when we got to that festival we, we the first person we seen was Brad and he and we were like because of course, course we're both you know Australian bands we've got that sort of like to bond right, you know yeah, like we're like bond, fuck yeah, yeah. We, we play with them a lot um, so we we seen him um, but yeah I think they were playing at the same time which was suck because we couldn't get to see each other like you know play um, but yeah we had a that show would uh, for me was one of my top five favorite shows I've ever done in this really? band. Like it was just the sound was great on stage. It was it, it just felt great. And w- when we when we began the set, it would, the room was sort of half full, and then as the gig went on, it became more full, and the whole the whole place was packed when we were, when we were playing the second half of the set. And it was just just a great show. It was really really good. Um, so is your latest release uh, evolved as Desol- I knew, that. I knew I was going to mess that up. Evolve Dissolve. Is that your latest release? Yeah, that's the latest one. We, um, we, we, and we it features up. some of your heaviest work uh, with Mind Casualty, Fiction Burns, as well as the clip to the accessible single Longest Line. <laughs> this is just me reading off your uh, Facebook. Um, ha- are you happy with how things are evolving? No pun intended with the music of Hail Mary to this point. Yeah, that, that record is definitely my... If I had to, like what I wanted the band to come across as what we sound like, that would be the, the really? record I wanted us to sound like the whole time. So I, I even after I recorded that, I was like, I wish everything else sounded like this one, you know? Right. So I, like, that to me is my favourite we've done. Um, I think the best songs on it. Maybe not, it, for, for just for me, that's that's what I feel. I think um, we're writing some new material at the moment and I'm probably going to do a full album next time. Excellent. So we're just working on that at the moment. Just chipping away at that shit? Yeah. Um... Sidebar to the Perth rock scene again. What do you think needs to be done to fix the Perth rock scene? Just that specific scene and get more people out to gigs. Is there any? Oh, it's so. I guess if you had the answer, you'd do it. But uh... it's so difficult to say because things are not. It is, there's a lot more factors than just where we are. I mean, we've talked about this before, back in the day, it was Channel V, and there was like the Big Day Out Festival, and the Soundwave Festival, and and there was stuff on, you know, the Big Day Out got, you know, put on, 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 on you, you, TV. You, 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 and... You'd be in Perth, you knew that Perth was the last show of the Big Day Out, so you'd be following the Brisbane show, the Sydney show, the Melbourne yeah. show, seeing all the interviews, then they'd show a clip of this band playing on this stage, this band playing on this stage, and then the very next year, the person who might be on the smaller stage because of being exposed on that, people from the other cities will see that band playing on Channel V and be like, oh, I'll make sure I check their set out the big day out. And then maybe the next year, which is Wolf Mother, who's who I'm really talking about, they're on a bigger stage. Yeah. It seemed like because of that thing that was going on, it really helped There was out, just lots of, have, lots of things... We uh, don't have those avenues that, anymore. That, that sort of built up that, that kind of... Whereas made like rock music more... I guess mainstream in a way, like where you like it's it, okay. Channel V's playing the Big Day Out Festival. There's rock bands playing on there, and you know Triple J at the time is is playing you know rock music, and yeah. there was a lot more exposed to that. Whereas it become now, it's like wh- where where do you get exposed to that material? Like where do you get exposed to that that stuff nowadays? Like in everyday life, it's not as common anymore. So it, bec- it becomes a bit more, especially in Perth, where whereas our governing body doesn't really embrace that whereas so basically you, you're fucking us dudes you're fucking <laughs> us like, we've got no one else we haven't got the channel but, but, and, I, the, and, and the uh, avenues to go down that were there you know over a decade ago or whenever at the same time I think as well it's like it shouldn't be up to like just a, we shouldn't have to rely on a government body to we shouldn't have to no, you know, but it's, but for some reason, like I don't, I I didn't, I didn't find that there was a governing body in Melbourne where I was there. I didn't even know there was one. I, I can't tell you what that is. Why no, why if, why has Perth got that that whole wham wham is is our thing? It's uh, it always judged. I don't understand why that if we have that in, in WA, whereas other places like when we played in Melbourne so much, I didn't even. There, I don't think there is one. They may be one, there probably but, not, is, but, but none know. of the bands give you fucking sh- flying shit about it, or or it's just not even relevant. Any other place we've ever played, they don't have that. So we've got this this uh, little, that thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's like this the way it is, but it, it does definitely does uh, put forward to people 
that this is the best we've got to offer in and it's a bubble, the, and it's, it's just it's just a small picture of what of what it what really is. There's a lot more to it than there's a lot. There's there's fucking piles of styles of music in Perth, and it's not all represented. That's all I'm saying. But that's I I don't know what is the answer. Like I I, I can't I can't tell you what. There's not as well as the, I think as well. There's not as many um, rock bands anymore. There's not as many as there used to be. So maybe it's just it's just the way it is. It's just that this time at the moment there's you know this band's coming up you know well there might be a little something I've got in the pipeline there's a little there's, there's a little fucking like album I've got a little idea there's in a little place. album coming it's, uh, it's uh, not just for me I mean, there's an idea a little idea I've got in place for the future for all the rock bands in Perth which uh, I might uh, let people know about at a later date but uh, it, if it works awesome if it doesn't I gave it a try but um I'm sure in the upcoming episodes I'll let you all know about that, and well, I'll keep you in the dark. I don't, well. I don't even know about this. As well. I'll let you know about it after we uh, get off the air. But um, it's just an idea because um, I've got a friend who can help me get the idea working. I I've got the idea, but I can't do anything to actually implement the idea. I need someone else's help, so I've got someone who'll help me. And you'll find out after we're off the air, bro. Um, is there a moment in time looking back over the last 10 years or so, however long Hail Mary been around now, um, where you feel like you made a mistake or you didn't get the chance to take the advantage of a certain situation to get ahead further? I don't know, um, be a tough question, but once again, this is kind of a question for the younger people out there. Was there a, something that you, a point in time where it's like, ah, oh, we should have done this not, then? Not really. No, nah, there was the. I think v- w- when I looked at the band, like I, 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 found, I found like if you had a graph of 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 the band, get, like it's always like been on on an up. Right. I mean, I think this this year is probably the, our, our year we've done the least amount, but only because uh, we've had different guys join the band, so that took a bit of time to sort of get that going. And um, but we've we've done the. the Whatever opportunities came along, we've we've done our best to our ability and um, played the, played as many shows as we could and done as much as we can and um, that's all it is. Like that's all I can say with a, with a band like it trying to come up and play. It's not. It doesn't come down to how good your band is. It's nothing to do with that. You, it's just there is a lot of luck and you've got to be in the right places you've got to put yourself in those right places that's all I can say put yourself in the situation to open the avenue to get you to this a, point A to point B that's all you can do that's all you're in control of you're only in control of that so that's what you can do to control it is just be seen be be playing these gigs trying to get to this gig and, and or networking getting to those points where you can open those avenues um, but that's all you can be in control of but uh, as far as that's concerned I think we've done all we can so if I was to ask you, how would you rate Hail Mary's success at this stage in comparison to your expectations of where you would hope you'd be at this point when you first started? Oh, well, fucking obviously you, you want to be, you want to be fucking uh, uh, like touring the world and doing all that kind of stuff. And and I think my band is good enough to do, be doing that. It's but at this, I've got to say to you, I think there's plenty of bands out there. They play in Perth, play in Melbourne. All those bands are good enough to be doing that. But it's not about that. Like, once you get, once you, what your expectation when you start is where you want to get to this point. I want to be famous. I want to do, play, make an albums, do all this shit. That's what you want to do. But it's not always up to you to. to it's you know, I mean, you got to be. Right, yeah, it, yeah. I, I know myself. I, I'm quite content knowing that I, if my band had the opportunity to do more touring, I know that eventually. Oh God, I think we're going to get arrested this in the car. He's just killing me right now. He's trying to make a point in this fucking... Have I said heli- something like, is this, is this, is this, is this a, Black Ops? Is that is a Whamacopter? Yeah, <laughs> um, but, but Back to what I was saying is, um, once this... Uh, I, think, I think they're fucked off now. I think they're gone. Yeah. They've got what they needed to get. Um, of what I'm saying is, 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 what is success to someone? You know, like... It, it, like to me, success is like being on the level of like the Screaming Jets that point in their career and to be able to book a tour around Australia and it be sold out to me I'm, I'd be happy with yeah, that yeah that's, pre- me, that's pretty I'd cool that that's success. pretty cool you know like um, I don't just... want too many big expectations of myself because <laughs> I'll be deathly disappointed but the, the, the difference between the time when the Screaming Jets came out 
to play music to what we're coming, we're, yeah, what we're we fucked, have to come basically. through. We, we've got advantages for them. We could reach people all around the world without having to leave yeah, the house. Yeah. But it, it's it's very different landscape we're in. Like, you know, like it just, you can only control what you can control and you can only do what you can do. I know that my band and a lot of bands out there um, can have got the ability and it's as good or not better than what you're seeing on Rage at three o'clock in the morning. Right. Better than what you're seeing at some festival, a download festival. You got, you know, where some of the bands playing there. Better than you know, some your support actually seeing supporting big bands you're seeing. They're better than them. It's just the only difference is those bands have got a management or or whatever in place to put them in that situation. That's the all. That's the, that's the only difference. It's not because you're not good enough and not because you don't write the the good songs. It's that's the only difference. Is that success? You've written, you've written good songs that people... Uh, for me, success, you know, we're making songs. People tell me, oh, fuck, I love that, I love that song. That's done, done something for me. That, is that success? That's on a success on a small scale? It depends what success is for someone. You know, it's right. what, what you feel it is, you know? So... And to anyone out there listening, you know, this, he's making really good points. He's... Obviously, you can hear what's going on in the background. There's helicopters. There was sirens. I Black mean, ops. I think there might have been a wambulance. Um, but the, the, look, I live in a nice area. Don't think that I live in some shithole, okay? This is a nice area. It just so happens this one time I'm interviewing this one person and all this shit's going on, okay? So just wanted to put that out there. Back to the interview. Okay, Kev. Um, I, we had this conversation a few months back maybe a few weeks back, about um, this really depressing kind of thought that I had. Uh, we're at the Scotsman and I said to you, um, you know, is there ever a time that you can sit back as a musician or performer and go, ah, yep, yep, I've achieved everything I want to achieve. You know, is being a musician a losing game? Will any accomplishment ever be enough? Is it always going to be there's something else, there's something else? I, I think so. Anyone's creative and wants to create stuff, it always wants to get to that, uh, okay, I've always been like that myself, whereas I'm always, I'll do something, for instance, doing that tour with Doug Lickie Joe, okay, I played with the band, I, you know, my first ever album, I played with them, I've done that, now, and now I'm like, okay, now, now what's next? next? And I have yeah. this kind of period so I where I, I get All very, I'm like, okay, well, now what I do, you know, like, so there's always, I think, if you're a creative person, and you, you're always striving for, the next thing and you know you want to do something more or I think that's why I'm a little bit un, uh, maybe I'm I don't know if I'm unfair of my band members but like I'm just like so frantic about the next thing and like I, I don't know you know they're, they're busy with their lives but for me this is like tunnel vision for me so I'm like I'm very frantic about it with them like what's the next thing come on come on come on come on come on and they're like oh you know I'm busy at the moment I've got work and this kind of thing but yes I'm with you with that but you you're know, like fuck work no, fuck no, your no, family we fucking, gotta fucking yes, make fucking some music come and on. talk come yeah, on. You know, like that's all I'm thinking about like what's the next thing the next thing the next thing I think I'll never be happy or, or at least like satisfied which is probably not a bad thing you know if, if I've got the thought in my head that that's okay then it's okay, you know, and I won't get too depressed about it because I—it's an active thought in my mind. I know I'll never be 100% satisfied with what I'm doing, and as you were saying just as, as well, you know, if that's what creative people are like. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Uh, the Aussie music industry in general. How do you feel about it right now? Uh, can you name me name me any rock bands right now? Like any bands? Like uh, uh, doing... ACDC. <laughs> Like, I mean, current current sort of like bands. Oh well, from what I've gathered, that's the only rock band that brings out albums uh, on the radio. Um, that's the only band that's a rock band from Australia that get put on the radio. They wait till they put out an album and they'll put put. Rock yeah, on the I, radio. I, I I don't I, I don't I, know anyone else. I don't I, know. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm. I'm re- it's just strange to me because I think Australia was built on rock and roll. We're all about that shit. We built this city on rock and roll. Yeah. Is that an Australian song? No, it's not. It's not, but still. But yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Like you know, you had your, you had your eighties, um, you know, in, in excess coming out and doing the, you know, the pub pub rock bands, pub rock divinals, you know, your nineties bands, Rose tattoo, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, it just went on and on, and and there was lots. I don't know. Nineties silver chair, powder finger, you know. You could go on and on Rainers, about, you know, but kept going um, and going, evolving more and more bands. The next fucking echelon came in and took the place of the bands from that era but that ba- bands from that era still played shows with the bands from the new era and then it just stopped yeah 
yeah, I, I, I don't know what happened. Like, I, I, I think it's the same thing I'm talking about with, with the whole, you know, we had the, had the triple, like the triple J support on these bands that were doing this rock music, and you had the, the Channel V doing the Big Day Out Festival and all that kind of stuff. And there was, it was a lot of, and it was mainstream. It was in the, in the eye of people. You could, you could see these bands play and you're exposed to them they were probably playing the morning show the green spoon would play in the morning show or or whatever it, it, it was in sight you could see this stuff happening but i don't i don't see that anymore i don't mm. see any any australian bands coming out that like rock i'm talking rock music in general uh, that are, are making any impact like where's where's your where's your core group of bands that uh, that are nowadays coming out in australia that are really becoming like household like because 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 yeah. those bands were household you know yeah. like you know you know you knew who the living end were yeah they were on the aria awards they're winning awards and shit like yeah. that and regurgitator were like you know on the aria you could see them on channel 10 the, the award show was on you could see the stuff you know you, you just don't see that anymore it's not in people's view so you, it, if it's not in sight it's, not it's in out of mind you don't yeah. see it you know yeah. but people don't support it and forget about it you know right. on to the next um tell me a little bit about your new lineup how you found Billy, how you found Kieran, and how they are, uh, you know, you know, melding, melding, <laughs> melding is a great word, melding into, you know, the, the bands that you know you and Vass were, you know, from the very beginning, from yeah. the beginning with. Um, uh, how's that been going? But it's been really, really great. Um, those two guys are super positive, super like just lovely to be around just you have a good time playing with these guys uh billy was a guitarist in another band before us um i we, we played with his band and i remember seeing him playing in that band and thinking he's in the wrong band that guy should be he should be he should be in a different band i just felt, felt his style the way he was playing i just felt like he was he was a rock guy and and he was playing in a band that wasn't as rock as him so i i just felt like uh i just remember seeing him and i thought he was a really really great guitarist and i thought he was he had a good a, a, just a good style and i remember him auditioning for the band and i already already knew what to expect him coming in so he came in very prepared and just nailed it he was really really good kieran uh i didn't know he was a bass player he did a film clip for our song uh, called my song. He was the director, basically producer. Did did the whole clip. Um, so I, we knew him. He was a friend of Vass's uh, drummer, so he the school friend. Um, so basically, we already knew who he was. So when we were looking for a bass player, he messaged and said I, he'd be keen on on trying really? the band. Right. So I, I didn't. I was like, well, I didn't know you didn't know you played. So. Um, before he came into the um the, the rehearsal room, I already obviously I already knew his temperament and what he was like. I already knew he was a really nice guy and really just just a very chilled chilled guy. So I already knew that his personality suited uh, with the rest of the band. So all he needed to do was just be able to play bass. So he kind of kind of when he came to the uh, the car park, he I said, "Oh, how you doing? How you doing with the songs?" And he he kind of underplayed it a little bit. He goes, "Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I think I'm, I think I'm going to be all right." So, I'm, and when it, when he said that, I, I, I instantly thought he's not going to be very good. I think he's going to suck. Right. I, I thought that initially. It's I thought very he, smart of him. It's a very he, smart. He just he, he just basically downplayed himself that he wasn't going to be very good. So when he came in the room, so he surprises was surprises you. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's he did sick. his homework. <laughs> he learned the songs note for note, tight <laughs> as shit. Oh, wicked! And he was really really good in it. And um. Yeah, he was uh, straight away. I was like, I didn't need another rehearsal with him. I just, I just knew from his personality and from 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 him, the, him putting the effort in to learn the stuff properly. I just, I just wanted him in the band. I remember you, you seemed quite. Uh, I don't know. It was just an annoying process that you were going through with all the audition stuff and all that. Um, but I was very happy to hear about some stories about how they're fitting into the band and specifically how uh, Billy seems to be such a giving person. Uh, and every time you rehearse, yeah, I, he I need, brings the beers. He brings beers almost he every single. Either I don't that, think he drinks any of them, does he? No, he doesn't. He's not much of a drinker. He drinks one, maybe one, and then me and Vass will probably drink the rest. Um, our bass player Kieran, he doesn't drink. Um, so, so any rider we have or any beers, like so basically it's going to be and Vass have just yeah, we we we've, we've got all to ourselves. So that's. Night. So it's kind of that, that sealed the deal with them getting the gig with the, with the band, like you know, okay, cool. So what? So what you're saying is we're going to get more beers 
out of you being in the band, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Um, do you have any horror stories of auditions? I, I uh, yeah, I do. I do. I've got a, I've got a couple. Um, I'm, I'll tell you two. Uh, there was one uh, when it was me and Todd, our original guitarist. We were auditioning for a drummer, and this guy said he had a home studio. We could we could do the jamming, so we didn't have to pay for a rehearsal room. We could just you know go to his home studio. Right. So we're like, cool. This guy's got this guy's on the ball, you know. Okay. So we get to this guy's house. We we just we're walking up to his <laughs> up to his front door. He's coming out with a boogie board in his in his, in his hand. Well, it's a body board for anyone out of uh, Australia. Um, under his, under his armpit, you know, he's he's ready to go to the beach. He's like, oh, he's like, looks stoned. And he goes, oh, you guys are, you guys are coming today, are you? We spoke about this like two hours ago on the phone. Oh, right. So we're like, he goes, oh yeah, no worries, boys. Come in, come in. He um he gives us a boat, a bottle of uh, VB. He goes, here you go, guys. I thank, I was like, thanks, man. So he um. His home studio was basically his lounge room. There was no studio. It was just his lounge room and his drum set up. Right, so we, um, we we play a, a, a riff at the time. It was kind of like similar to like, uh, just a really straight, dan, 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 like that kind of riff. Right, yeah. So it requires probably just a 4-4 four, four beat. Just yeah, just a simple. Just, just, just something like that would be fine. <laughs> this guy, has got his smoke out of his, out of his, out of his lips. And it's like the the ash is just probably like you know like uh, fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's like a bit fucking like ten centimeters long. He's smoking away, and he and he just closes his eyes. He's not feeling the music, and he starts to do this like this punk beat, like like real fast, like just 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 like this. And then we're like, he's not even listening to what the fuck we're playing or anything going on. He's in his own world, just just. <laughs> just closed eyes playing this punk beat and then me and Todd just look at each other and like we need to get the fuck out of here this is a waste of time so that was that was that I had an addition I have to uh, this is a great story as well um, we had this guy come in for another band I played in before Hail Mary it was, it was, I, I just I don't even know where to start with this guy he came in he was auditioning for bass super sweaty he was sweaty nervous Kind of felt for the guy, you know? So we said, hey, we're going to play this song. I can't remember what it was. We, it was a cover of, of something. Maybe a Thin Lizzy cover, actually, it was. And he came in. He goes, cool, cool. Yep, sweet. So he got. He goes, oh, hey, guys, I, I just want to let you know I didn't bring my bass with me. I didn't. I don't have a bass at the moment. And we're like, well, how, the, how are you going to audition? Like, can, he goes, can I just show you the, the root notes on, on, on the guitar? I'm like, okay, cool. No, no worries. We'll... we'll, we'll. All right. We, we just humoured him because we were like, okay, <sighs> we're like, we, automatically we're thinking this is a fucking waste of time. So he ended up getting this guitar. So he's got, he got the, reluctantly the the guitarist gave him the guitar to to show him what he can do on this track. So he just gets the guitar and he starts tuning the guitar like boom, boom, tuning the the strings all the way down real low. And we're like, what what are you doing? And he goes, I'm I'm tuning it down lower so it sounds more like a bass. <laughs> yeah, and and we and yeah, that was it. That was it. it. Was like, yeah, mate. We'll, uh, we'll we'll see you later. Oh god, it's such a fucking shit process. I hate <laughs> oh, it. When we were looking for a replacement for John and the band, it just it was so demoralizing, and it just made me feel like fuck. Like no one good wants to apply for this band. It's just all shit cunts, you know, like. <laughs> Nothing against those people, you know that they were nice enough people, but fuck, they just so some one person applied. They'd only been playing guitar for two months. Like on this song, you got a palm mute here. What's a palm mute? Oh, oh, forget about it. Um, <laughs> um, I want to talk next. Uh, you know, we're getting towards an hour now for part two. Uh, I want to talk about the living that you're making right now in between times when you can actually focus on doing the Hail Mary shit, it's, you're making a living doing covers. Yeah, and yeah. And you're playing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes Monday, sometimes a Thursday, I don't know, but there's, yeah. you know, you get the odd one here and there on those days, but um, making a living doing covers, you know, you, you, you're doing these sets, and I love the fact that, you know, you probably make more money doing that than a normal person does doing a nine to five job from Monday to Friday. 
Um, yeah, well, well, most times anyway, if you get a good yeah, I mean, you know, you, you've got to constantly have gigs every weekend, and and hope hopefully you get get you know enough to to get to pay the bills, and that's that's a little bit of a you know always in the back of your mind like oh, I've got to be playing, which I've been successfully doing like full time doing doing this for like probably two three years. I've been doing this. Right. Uh, but I have been doing this kind of thing for like probably seven it or eight. It seems like the thing to do now if you're a musician and you want to make a living. You can't do it. Obviously, you can't do it as an original. This is the yeah, way to I mean, do it. Yeah, I, I, every, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, I'll be doing three 45-minute sets of, of acoustic covers. I, I just go in a pub and I'm, I'll have my acoustic guitar and I'll be, I'll be playing a range of music from, you know, 60s till, till, till now. You'll be playing, you know, a bit of Presidents of the United States. Yeah, you can play, I play that. Dune and, Buggy. Yeah, I, I, I played that one recently, actually. You, on play, you play Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. Yeah, I play all sorts of stuff. I could play, I've got I have a repertoire of probably like 400, 500 songs. I could, and I believe it's because of me that you started implementing some Savage Garden. In it, it was, yeah, you told me to, um, I needed some Savage Garden and I, I, I learned I want you. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's great. Um, tell me the good things and the bad things about being a cover musician. Uh, you, I mean, Perth. you get that stigma of, of uh, ooh, you're a cover person. And I was like, I'm like, fuck off, man. I'm, I'm, I was doing originals way before covers. Doing the cover stuff is great because you get to sing every week and you're always using your voice. You can get better at your voice because you're using it. You can't get better doing an original gig once a month you, you have to be using that it's it's a muscle you've got to be using so that's great playing playing covers you get yeah, to I use to you get to use your voice a lot and so that's uh you know and you get paid to play music and you can drink on the job it's a fucking pretty pretty sweet deal right and a lot of the times you're in venues where girls are wearing low cut tops so that helps <laughs> as well that's pretty dope <laughs> yeah you know it's good you know, the scenery is always good <laughs> um but um yeah the probably the 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 negatives of it is sometimes people expect you to be a fucking jukebox and and if you can't play a song they'll request a song it's so obscure i'm like i i don't know what you're talking about i don't know what i didn't i don't know what that song is and then and look at you like you're an idiot because you can't play this particular song they wanted from this album released 26 years ago that was this B-side of some song. <laughs> what, like I'm not like oh yeah, mate you can no you can do it. It's only a couple of chords. Like I don't like I need to know what the fucking song is before you need I can play. I words can't. In your iPad, you need I to need know to, I need to know it. the song. So like that's the thing when you get people are, are very annoying and they'll come up to you and, and like want to sing with you. Oh my friend's a really good singer. That's great. We'll get them to get a guitar. And get a job and, and do what I'm doing then. So, fuck off and leave me alone. You know? <laughs> but, but, but but generally, you meet some really really cool I, people. I, I find this to be before you go back to saying nice things. I want to keep on the <laughs> okay. Let's get let's get. Um, I've got friends who are DJs. Uh, Endorse, I think is his his name's Nick. Uh, he DJs at the Avery, etc. He's all weekend. He's always doing stuff. I love the horror stories from him of people getting shitty at him. You know you know pl- asking him to play certain songs and you know he's at a gig where he's playing house music but someone's saying oh mate you should play some you play play horses by dale braithwaite or some <laughs> shit like that and he's like mate this isn't the time or place for it you know and then the guy will be like oh fuck off then you don't know what you're doing you shit or whatever um i love the story of the woman that wouldn't fucking leave you alone at the generous squire or something oh yeah 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 yeah. that's uh, that is uh tell the story anyone out there who's a cover artist or a dj (laughs) this is perfect go well she uh she came up and you know gave us a couple compliments and said oh um wouldn't which later i realized that the compliments just were just a ploy for her to to get her to come up and sing with us so she asked to come up and can i sing this song uh, I can't remember what it was, but we couldn't play. I don't know what the fuck she was talking about. But she wanted to sing with us. Can I sing with this? I said no. The the venue employs us to to perform. You know, I don't know you. I, I'm sorry. This is the way it is. You know, basically. But why? I've just explained to you why I can't let you go up here because I'm getting paid. I can't. You, I can't have you coming up here and just doing what you want because, you know, like it's just it's, it's equivalent of someone who works behind a bar. 
Okay, I want that beer. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll pour the beer. No, no, no. You don't have to. Do it. No, no. I'll do it. I'll, I'll pour the beer for right. to, to a bar person, like a barmaid. Like, you know? yeah. no, no. Like, this is my job. I'm playing. I get paid to play three forty-five minute sets. That's what I'm doing. So she kept on asking, but why? But why? I want to. No one comes sing. I'm, I'm, I understand that, but I'm, I'm employed. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I got to the point where I'm just like, listen. I'm going to leave now. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm done talking to you. I've, I've explained. You're being starting a bit rude. I'm done with you. So she goes, "Well, you're not as you're not as fucking good as think you think you are," and she just went and stormed away. <sighs> so, so I walk away. All right, whatever. Okay, I was nice. I didn't say anything nasty to you. I'm leaving. Then she comes back over to me. And she goes, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was being rude. Okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I didn't shouldn't have said that. Um, but um, can I sing?" God, like, I can't believe she actually fucking, she came up and apologized and still fucking asked again, for Christ's sake. And she actually, uh, when I was on my, uh, when I wasn't looking, when I was on my break as well, she actually tried to go up and grab the mic and try to sing. And it was, oh. it was on, it was on the mute. Uh, so nothing was coming out. And the, um, the security guard told her to fucking get off the stage. Oh, you silly bitch. Um, <laughs> Uh, one more story that I love from you is when you were playing at the Craigie. Yeah. And you were playing to an empty room and a woman <laughs> was trying to get you to come play in the sports bar in front of all the people there. But you were booked to play in the other room. Yeah. But she so, wouldn't leave it alone. So she, she wanted to be booker and she wanted to book me in the other room and put me in there. Well, like... You know, I, I, I'm I, once again I'm working. I get told this is where you are. You're playing covers. Um, you're playing covers. This is where you are. You got a worksheet. This is where you work. You know, and this is like this is like your job. You know, you, you your your designated areas here. You work here. That's what you get paid to do. So I'm in this area, and this woman would not like. She would not take no for an answer. You shouldn't be playing here. You should be playing this other area in the in the pub. It should be in this other room. And I'm like, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, you, you might be right, but like. I can't do anything about it. So I, I try to explain it to her. Nope. She got the manager. She wanted me through there. Uh, I said, I can't, I can't go there. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here. This is what I'm doing. But why can't you go through there? Like, just, just like, pay, just move through. And the same thing just will not take no don't, for an don't, answer. Don't, don't you want to get your name out she there? She goes, well, yeah, don't you want to be, you know, I'm trying to help you here. I'm like, I don't need my name out. I don't there. need I'm my name out. I'm doing fine. I'm doing, I'm doing fine. I'm just doing, I'm getting paid to do a job. That's what I'm doing. I don't need it. And now but when now, you play at the Craig, you Now, you now, play, her influence, play. now you go in both areas. So, now you yeah. have to go in both areas. You wouldn't <laughs> fucking, even after you were gone, she wouldn't leave it alone and now you play in both areas. Um, well, thanks for all that. But okay, if you want to talk about some more of the good things and go for it, I prefer negative stuff, but go on. Ah. Uh. <laughs> good stuff I had, I had another time Many nice people I don't know I had another time where uh, a uh, another funny story where it was uh, I had to be politically correct here but uh, we had a uh, a guy he was um, a little person not a midget. no 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 no. he was uh, he was a little uh, handicapped I would say lovely person came up to us we were chatting to him and, right. he, and he asked us you know, I can, you know, can he, why don't, why don't we have a drummer? Because I was just playing as a duo, two acoustics, that kind of thing. Why don't we have a drummer? I said, I don't know. I just, this is the way we booked this. The worksheet requires two, two guitarists. That's what we play. That's, that's the way it is. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, we, you should have a drummer. You should have a drummer. I'm like, yeah, probably. It would, it would be cool. Cool. So we went back on for our next set to play some, 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 some more songs. And um, this fellow, he, uh, he ended up grabbing one of those uh, like round, uh, like, <laughs> like seats, but they sort of like I don't know what you would call puffy, puffy chairs or something. They're kind of like round yeah, sort of yeah. thing. So he got that, picked up one of them, went <clears throat> straight in front of us, smack bang center. So he started playing, and then he started just going <laughs> on this thing as we're playing this song, completely out of time with us. And it was just <laughs> like he was throwing us off so badly. It was, it was like. And I'm looking at the security and looking at the bar because this thing was quite loud, you know. He's like smacking the crap out of this thing, and I'm looking at the security and the and the, and the bar, and they're looking at him like, the smile thing. The thing is funny, and it's like, fuck, you're he's killing me. You're killing us right now. You're killing us here. So eventually, someone came up and just gave him a little tap and said, you know, like, stop now. Yeah. Right. Like, but thanks, thanks for that, woman. That was that was that, the main thing. So that's a great story. Um, all right, Kevin. All right, we're getting to the tail end here now. 
um, you have a new single for yourself. Yes. It's not Hail Mary, this is Kevin Curran. What made you want to step out of the realm of Hail Mary and do your own thing? Why can't this be a Hail Mary song? <laughs> well, that's well, saying that, that's, that's happened a lot of the time. I've had songs where I was going to do this whole acoustic solo thing and I end up using those songs for Hail Mary. One was Longest Line. It was right. one of the single we released with Hail Mary. That was a song I had that I was going to release under myself. Uh, and we had five tracks for the EP and one of them wasn't working out. So I ended up going, I've got this song and ended up being that being on there. Um, it's happened, the, this, the previous EP as well I had another song I was going to use for it myself as a solo because I wanted to do a more acoustic y, one man sort of a performance sort of thing, which is different than the whole rock thing. And I've um, always used songs that I was going to use for that for Hail Mary but this time around I had a, a particular song and I just I just we, we had a bit of downtime for the band when we were, we were finding new members and um, I just yeah right. I ended up recording it and had a bit of fun with it and then now I've sort of put it out as myself and it's something I'm going to continue to do and sort of every now and then I'll, I'll just release a song when I feel feel I've got something or right. instead of doing the whole album format I'm going to kind of do it a little different and just sort of Spring Once a song on now, time. now and yeah. then, yeah. Just and then, just play some shows. Sprinkle now it every now. Yeah, and then. Right. yeah. Um, you've got a little tour coming up for Wake the Living Dead. Um, tell me what's going on there with that. Yeah, just doing a little small little tour. Uh, one show in Perth, one in Bunbury, and one in Melbourne. Um, I haven't been in Melbourne a few years with Hail Mary, so I kind of wanted to go back there and and, and play some shows because we do have a. a, a the fans of the band over in Melbourne so I kind of wanted to do a little, little show there just a, just low key acoustic key sort of just strip back Sunday sesh kind of gigs and that's kind of what it's I'm doing um, playing in Melbourne on the 21st I think it is in Melbourne at the uh, Last Chance Rock and Roll Bar actually Bunbury's the first gig which is on the 19th at the National Hotel and then I've got the last show which is in Perth at the 459 Bar at the Rosemount uh, that's on the 29th of November. So all shows are... Uh, no, sorry, October. October. Sorry. I was going to say. I was going to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm on hold in November. October is, is when it's happening. Right. Okay. Um, so at this point, we're going to play a little teaser. I'm not going to play the whole song. Just a little teaser of the song. Okay. But before we play the teaser of the song, let people know where they can find it or how they can, you know, acquire this thing. If you want to support me... Buy the track on iTunes uh, for a dollar, whatever it is, thirty cents, whatever, uh, and that will actually fund fund will give me some some sort of cash. I think they take money, so maybe sixty cents, whatever. That's the best way to support me. If not, if you just want to stream the track, you can stream it for free on Spotify, which I know a lot of people will because that's what happens. Uh, so it's on Spotify, iTunes, any like uh, streaming service, Deezer, like, you name it. Shazam, you can just, if you heard something on the radio, it was me, you can, you can Shazam it, it would come up. Anything like that, it's on there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just on digital platform at the moment. So no. listen to it on Spotify about a million times so Kevin can buy a cheeseburger. Yeah, maybe one patty. Just one, one patty. Not, not a triple cheese, just a, just a single patty You're just going to throw away the bun anyway. Yeah. Um, so we're going to play the teaser right now. This is the song Wake the Living Dead by the one and only big sexy Kevin Curran.
And we're back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little teaser of Wake the Living Dead by the one and only Kevin Curran. I'm here with Kevin Curran and we're getting quite close to the end here of uh, the proceedings, Kevin. And um, really appreciate your time. Uh, I guess we'll slowly but surely end this very soon. I've got no more questions written down, so I'm just, you know, going on a whim here. Um, this is what's in the pipeline next What's the next step for Hail Mary? Uh, we're just writing writing some new material at the moment. Uh, got some really good so good good material. It's very different. It's kind of like a bit more weirder, a bit more darker. And I'm I'm kind of really enjoying um, the, the songs we got at the moment. So we're gonna just gonna get stuck into um, doing that and sort of getting a new release. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do a couple more clips for the uh, for the last EP. We've got a couple of ideas of um, so just to just to end that that sort of section of the band of that that evolved dissolve ep so we're gonna do a couple more clips for that um but yeah once we got that new release we're gonna to try to go back to the uk and, and tour there again because it's just something you know people are asking for us for us to do so back to the uk um and are you yeah to get a slot with someone or you do it yourself that would be nice but you know it's just just well, it, it comes a support it, this, band yeah it comes please. down <laughs> we need something suitcases <laughs> not full so yeah jump in there, <laughs> um, so yeah trying to trying to go back to places we've been that we've done well at like yeah back to back to the eastern states again and maybe do a show a couple of shows over there so yeah it's getting getting the getting the um the engine cranked up again with the band and start Get the wheels turning yeah so we got some good guys in the band just great players great guys and um so you're looking forward to doing doing more and writing some new material we've we've we're definitely definitely excited about doing something new excellent um is there anything that you'd like to say to any of your fans or your friends listening to this right now who've supported the band over the last 10 or so years uh, yeah cheers cheers for listening uh, if, you, if, you, yeah, if you're digging what we're doing that's that's awesome and um, if someone's listening to this for the first time doesn't, doesn't have a clue who we are check it out and um, yeah we'll hopefully uh, see you at a show or how can those people find you on social media what, what where, where do they have to where do they have to go oh uh, if you Hail Mary Band is, pro, is the at, the username for a lot of the stuff so if Facebook is just I, actually Facebook's the only one that's different so Facebook is uh, slash Hail Mary Band page. All the rest of the stuff, Twitter at Hail Mary Band, YouTube at Hail Mary Band, um, Instagrams at, at Hail Mary Band. So everything is at Hail Mary Band. Website www.hailmaryband.net. So if you put Hail Mary Band in, in, in Google, the Google machine, It'll it'll come up. So actually, probably Tupac will come up first. Uh, Tupac has got a song called Hammer. Oh, right. That's, yeah. that's more, more popular than us, and I, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, stay hate, hopeful, bro. Um, well, thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And um, you know, and thank you for you know being a, a friend and for playing shows with Jackson Coke and uh, you know being a positive kind of human being to be around and I really appreciate your time here on Hotel California and telling your story your musical journey as I like to say uh, for all, me and uh, everyone else that is a listener so thanks my friend no worries man and thank you for listening to Hotel California I'm sorry again Kevin that we didn't get to talk about wrestling but I just couldn't figure out where we could put it in but um, maybe another time no wrestling what the hell man like <laughs> this, they, this could be like a four part if the, if the wrestling uh, if got if in we there talk about wrestling this oh, would be fucking game over yeah mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so thank you everyone for listening to episode four and five of Hotel California before we go Kevin though we gotta end on a Hail Mary track what is your favourite Hail Mary song we'll play it for everyone right now um but let's go. Let's go. Mind casualty off the uh, the latest EP evolved to solve. I think that one's a uh, that one's a good one. All right, mind casualty it is. So once again, thank you everyone for listening. This is Hail Mary with mind casualty, and again, thank you to Kevin Curran for being here today, and thank you for listening. I will see you all very very soon next time. Cheers. <laughs>